Hello, hello. We are live with Grimmy. <laughs> She's been doing great so far. How long have we had her now? Month and a half, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. She's been super we good. We got her on light march. Oh, Sammy Joe is in the house. Hello, hello. Let me get you on here. Perfect. Then sit. Hello. Hello! How are How's you doing? Oh, we're doing well. We have Grammy here today. And oh, good. So excited to be on the live with you. How are yes. you? Doing all right. Really enjoying spring, finally. Good. Yeah. I would say, how is the weather in Chicago? It's been so stormy here. Oh, yeah. It's really, it's been really nice this week, finally. Oh, I love that. Yeah, where are you all located currently? Nashville, Tennessee, actually. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, originally it. from Ohio here. Are you originally from the Chicago area? No, I'm originally from Colorado. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. What was that like, you know? It's snowing right now, currently. What? Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, or a couple days ago. Yeah. Why? Absolutely. Well, Kind of just jumping right in. So we are no subject apparel, and we're super excited to have you here for a community that connects. And just to get started, we like to start with our names, our pronouns, any sort of identifiers. You know, you want to share. Faith, you want to start? Uh, yes, my name is Faith, co-founder of No Subject, and um, I'm a lesbian, and she/her. Awesome. Um, Morgan Jurgens, she/her. Uh, queer and super excited to be here. Yeah, and I'm Sammy Jo, she or they, also queer and super excited to be here. Yes, I love it. So Sammy, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm a Chicago-based artist who wears many, many hats. I'm a theater artist, I act, I write, I direct, I dramaturg, I do whatever job <laughs> people need to build. And I'm also a tarot reader and a poet. So during the, I've been reading tarot for like five years now. Cool. And then, yeah, during the pandemic, I was like, I should make this more of an offering. So now I, I've started Poetry Pools. It's a business where I read tarot for people and then write a poem about it. And I type it up on my typewriter, send it in the mail. So I got a little bit of an old soul. That is such oh. a beautiful experience, and to share mm -hmm. that with other people, even during, you know, everything. Yeah. So, like you said, five years ago, you started reading? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I lived in Seattle. I moved to Seattle straight out of college, and I had encountered a tarot deck in this, like, little apothecary gift shop, and I was like, ooh, what is this? And I saw the price tag, and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Ew, then, right. <laughs> right? They're more expensive than one might think. But I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I went back and got it a couple weeks later, and it was just a, a delightfully slippery slope from there. <laughs> That's so incredible that you were so drawn to it, like, that you had to go mm -hmm. back for it. And so for you, how did you, so you were drawn to this deck, it seems almost in, naturally. And so where did you start learning more about it and exploring that passion? Yeah, 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 yeah. So my first deck was The Wanderer's Tarot by Casey Zavala. Oh. And the guidebook that comes with it is super comprehensive. It's a very feminist oriented deck. Yes. I read that cover to cover and I was like, this is awesome. And then from there it was books and then Instagram communities and it just spirals from there. That's so incredible. And so did you start off just like reading for friends and family and mostly for myself actually. And I found as a writer, it was a very helpful doing tarot readings for my characters as an actor was like, whoa, this is such a, it would just like click things. I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I used oh. it as a prompt first. And then I was like, oh, this is actually really helpful as a life thing, as a grounding and a ritual to check in and be more self-aware. And then from there, it's been about two going on three years now that I started reading for other people. That's really incredible. And I'm so interested in this process of pulling these cards for your characters. And mm -hmm. that's, yeah, 
I love that practice. And I think that's a really creative way to get into the, almost that mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's a great way to jog. Because, you know, we're not aware of what we're not aware of until something else is like, have you thought about it this way? And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Hey, I love that. And so for you, even just like over the past year, what has, what is kind of, well, how have your eyes been open? How's your view of the world and how has your work kind of shifted through this time? Or how have you worked to maintain, you know, during this time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stillness is a new, a new, 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 new thing for me. Back a full year ago, my March calendar was like, every hour practically was blocked out. And then suddenly April and May, it was just like, oh God, there's nothing, <laughs> what do I, <sighs> And so that initially was like a totally new relationship with myself of like, whoa, who am I when I'm not moving, moving, moving? <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like it's kind of been beautiful, especially as like, I mean, you were in music before, I did theater before and just like, I feel that it's like for the first time you were kind of forced to slow down and really, mm -hmm. really be a little more intentional and reevaluate how you wanted to kind of take each day. Yeah, absolutely. And really appreciating the little things like puzzles. Oh my God. Yeah. Puzzles are the best. <laughs> We've almost bought a puzzle recently and we just haven't done it. And I'm like, oh, oh this do it. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And so, like, how have you, because, like, you know, that we're put into this place of isolation almost, and so how have you found ways to stay connected with your community? I mean, you have your Tarot community online with Instagram. Mm -hmm. like, what other communities are you a part of? And yeah, I'm actually working with some friends and collaborators on some Shakespeare spin-off devised films. That's a devising theater is something I'm quite experienced in. I'm like, how are we going to build a film from scratch? It's been a, an interesting learning curve, but we've been taking three Shakespeare plays that are all of our favorites and taking the characters and setting them in Zoom college. So it was a couple months of just meeting and brainstorming and being like, what college? So we actually have Juliet from Romeo and Juliet going to Wittenberg University with oh. Hannah Horatio. Yes. That, you know, we're all nerds and we all have our own headcanons <laughs> of Shakespeare and creating that community to be like, well, let's make this real. Let's turn this into little short films. So that has been a great community that I've gathered virtually on screens lately. That's really incredible. Yeah. And so when, when do you have plans to kind of like take these films, like, like go and film them and bring them to yeah. life? They should be ready like July, August is our, our current goal. The scripts are like 80% done and then we're heading into filming mode. That's so exciting. And so everything, what are your plans as far as like filming goes? Is it going to be completely virtual like through the Zoom call? Yes, so we have, we set them chronologically. So we have one in 2020, one in 2021 and one in 2022. So we're also filming them in that order. So we're starting virtually and we're hoping that by late June, we'll be able to do some outdoor in-person filming, scheduling yeah. during the uh, So like, well, we hope this is the plan, but you know, safety first. So it, we're 80% sure that's how it's gonna work. But Absolutely. yeah, so we're definitely starting with screen grabbing the Zooms first. That will be so exciting. Like, I hope that we get to see these films. They sound incredible. Oh, you'll see them. It's just a matter of when it's finally. <laughs> right, yeah. absolutely. So tell us about the story behind your project Inside Out and how you yeah. got Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, a few years ago. I did a residency, a site-specific dance residency in oh. La Mama, Umbria, Umbria's, um, it's in central Italy. And so we put together this complete show made from scratch in a couple weeks and performed it in three different piazzas in Italy. And it was one of the most incredible creative experiences of my life. We all based our own characters kind of on ourselves, but in this like very archetypical world. So I, as the American of the group, was the like 
<laughs> freedom was my big thing. Yes. And so the show was in Italian, Russian, Korean, and English because we all just spoke our own languages because it was a dance show. Oh, yeah. yeah, but one of my favorite uh, two truths and a lie is like one time I rolled in dog poop in the middle of a performance. <laughs> Because we were, it was life specific. We were doing it in public squares. And there was one day I had this all white costume and I was rolling around dancing on the ground and I hear this squish and I'm like, oh no, oh no. And then I smelled it. And this was in Italy in the summer. So our final moment, we had like this slow motion thing while there was a scene going on and it was the middle of the afternoon and the sun. And like the longer I stood there, the stronger the smell got. And I was like, this isn't. This is my life right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> but afterwards, um, a good friend of mine was like, we need to find you a shower because someone ran and got me a new white t-shirt. It was a two-doche. We had an afternoon and an evening performance. Oh. So, like someone went, ran and got me a new t-shirt. My friend Christina from Russia was just asking, she's like, can she shower? Can she shower? <laughs> oh, <laughs> me a random apartment so I could go wash the dog poop out of my hair. That's um, what, a, what a time. What a story. Honestly, yeah. you'll never forget that, I'm sure. No, I will not. <laughs> so what was it like devising that piece? I mean, choreography, spoken mm -hmm. word, you're dealing with, you know, it's multi-languages. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, we hit the ground running. I had Stephen Koplowitz was the director, and he's very done a lot of site-specific work. I highly recommend looking him up. He's done some really cool projects. But we did a bunch of exercises, and then we started, it was based, there was this ancient wall, which in Italy, they have so many, like, ruins that they were building an elevator to make the city more accessible because it's built on a hill. And they found this old wall, and they were like, oh, okay, and moved the elevator, like, two feet over and just left the wall up. And we were like, what? That was the whole impetus for the piece. Okay. We're like, this is about a civilization that fell and there was a dictator. And we just went with it and ran with it. And I, the director found out I was a poet. And he was like, write some poems. I was like, okay. So I wrote some poems. And then the impetus after like some of us snuck away from the dictator and like ran down the street and the audience would follow me. And I got to this like staircase that I don't know if we got permission to use. We probably did. <laughs> And I shouted this poem and it was, yes. yeah, we just like threw things at the wall and kept what was cool and made a show. Bam, bam, bam. And you said the audience was running along with you? Mm-hmm, yeah. Incredible. It was wild. And then we'd there'd be random people on the street that were like, what is this? And they'd tag along. It was incredible. That's amazing. That yeah. sounds like so beautiful. And so have you found that you you really like what's your favorite facet i mean you are so multidisciplined. like it sounds mm -hmm. like you kind of do a little bit of everything do you have something that's maybe your favorite performing will always be my first love but yeah. i i've been getting more and more into directing lately and really feeling like like maybe i'll get my graduate degree in directing because i'm really drawn to it nowadays that's incredible. I think that would be a really, that's like an exciting journey and yeah, interesting more about that. Yeah. So what is important to you to bring to your art and to an audience? Mm, that's a really good question. I think being eco-conscious is always important and I always try to look at things through that lens, just especially coming from Colorado and growing up, going to the mountains, just having that love of nature and being like, there are such beautiful things in the world that we need to be thinking about them, protecting what's still beautiful here. Absolutely. My biggest one. Oh my gosh. I love that. I just, I feel that like, it was always so hard to see these shows, like these grand shows be built and then just, to be immediately torn down and thrown in the garbage, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but true. There's, yeah, the, but there's some really great, um, there's a company out there actually called Paper Moon Productions, and they literally, mm -hmm. make, yes, have you heard of them? I have, yeah. It's really incredible. I mean, so to give you a background, they make their sets and costumes 
essentially out of paper. And then so, you know, they can be reused and rented oh, out, I but see. then also they can be recycled at the end of it. It's like a very special material that they use. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And so what other ways do you find like that you express yourself? Hmm, creative expression. <laughs> Isn't that the question these days? Yeah, I I play the guitar a little bit, mostly as a I'm a chord player, but it's a great yeah. way to jump. sometimes when I'm stuck on a writing project, I'll try to sing it and that's a, a good and it's also just so calming sometimes, even if it's just practicing three nice chords. It's mm -hmm. a big creative poem, I suppose. Oh, that sounds so incredible. Yeah, just put just put those poems to some music. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I mean, yeah. Is there anything? So you're working on these films right now. Is there anything else you want to share that you're working on right now that you're super excited about? Or anything? Yeah. I'll do a little Poetry Pulse plug. I do. I'm working on doing a community day once a month where I offer pay what you can readings and writings. Um, I just did the very first one. It was a big, I felt very good about it. Had a lot of fun. Um, so if you want to follow Poetry Pools on Instagram, I'll post. There will be one at the end of May that people can sign up for because accessibility is also important to me. And I think this year especially, accessibility has really come to the forefront of a lot of people's minds. And I hope that's something that sticks around once things are normal again. Yeah, honestly. Um, and I just thought about it because we were talking about like, and, and things that we're learning about this year. And I just, I just remembered you have the vulnerability as in shirt on. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what that means to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vulnerability is scary, <laughs> but it's <laughs> always so rewarding. I mm -hmm. think um, in college when I really got into poetry, I was like, I'm a poet. Like, this isn't just something I like. It's something I do. It's who I am. Um, some friends and I started a group called Speakeasy and I in my like farewell to college poem I wrote for that group I said speaking was never easy but it was always worth it and I feel like that's how I feel about vulnerability it's never easy but it's always worth it mm -hmm. and writing poems is so vulnerable for the writer and I found that writing poems for people personally is vulnerable for both of us in this really juicy kind of way it really makes some space for magic i think absolutely and so do you find like as far as like vulnerability goes do you find that it's easier for you i don't, I don't know if easier is even the word for it but do you find it easier to like express yourself and how you're like being able to express that vulnerability through you know written word but rather than verbal communication mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, easy is is a word. Yeah, I say I'm a poet because I have such a hard time finding the words for things. Yeah. I feel more myself on the page. There's like this lack of inhibition. I think when I speak through my pen first, I feel the most articulate and the most true when I'm reading something aloud that I've written beforehand. I'm a big mm -hmm. poetry slam poetry show regular in normal times of course <laughs> yes is that it, it's kind of a safety net to be like i have a script of sorts but mm -hmm. it's i don't know so often things we write about in poems are things that like don't come up in everyday conversations yeah but it really creates that space to be like this is what's really on my heart and on my mind absolutely it's almost like you get to be a little less you don't have to it's not that like brain to mouth filter you know you can just right. it's it's more it's an authentic expression yeah i love yeah. it yeah 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 that's incredible so we can find you at poetry pools um mm -hmm. you have a website too correct yes poetrypools.com and that's cool like you pull a tarot card where the poems pull it. you in Yes, I I mean, honestly, we need to do that here in the future. I just, yeah, I think it's so incredible what you're doing. Um, yeah, and I hope that everybody can support you and your art. Is there any other places we can find you online? 
I mean, SammyJoeJohnson.com if you want the theater artist. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's incredible. And yeah, thank you so much just for your time this evening. Yeah, thank you both. It was so oh, lovely. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care and yeah. enjoy the storms. Yes, thank you. Enjoy yeah. the spring. <laughs> Sunshine and summer is on its way. Indeed. Well, have care. a wonderful night and stay connected, everyone. Yes. Bye.